Welcome to our study of second aorists in Greek class. Most of the aorists in the Greek New Testament form with the tense formative sigma alpha, and we have already met this tense formative in a previous lesson. Uh, just to refresh our memories, the, the aorist is the past tense uh, in Greek which relates undefined action, and generally we can translate an aorist verb with the suffix ed in English. For instance, I could say I receive, present tense, or I could say I received, past tense. And generally this kind of action is indicated by the sigma alpha in Greek. And it says here there are, however, a good number of aorists that form directly from the verbal root, and they will not have this tense formative sigma alpha. And so that's what th this kind of aorist is what we're going to study in this lesson. And to illustrate how these verbs form, we're going to use two verbs, ginosko, which I believe we met in chapter 20, and ginomai, which we are going to learn here in chapter 22. So ginosko and ginomai. Uh, let's start with the form, the aorist form of ginosko. Ginosko means I know, and the aorist form would be egnon. Now, to us at this point, it looks a little strange, or probably looks a little strange. It forms directly from the root of the lexical form or the present form which is ginosko. So the aorist form is egnon and there's the you can see there's the addition of the augment on the front and then the secondary ending the first person singular secondary ending on the end. And so the form is egnon if ginosko means I know egnon would mean I knew. And uh, this illustrates how the second aorist form because it is a second aorist and it forms directly from the root. Then again oh mine the, the or genomen. The root of agenomen is gen. And the root here looks a little different from the present tense form. Uh, the present or lexical form is genomai, and this means I am or I come into existence, or but it's some some usually it's translated as some kind of being verb. The root is gen. That looks a little different from the gin, which we're used to seeing in the present form. And the aorist form forms directly from the root instead of forming from uh, the, the present tense stem. So again, it has the augment. And just as its deponent in the present tense form, in other words, it has that middle passive ending, my, it's also going to be deponent in its aorist form, again, omain. Now, if we consider a verb like elusa, uh, this forms, the, the, the lexical form is luo, and the root is lu. And this is one that its root never changes in any tense. Remember, we've talked about the different patterns, the, the verbs that whose root never changes no matter what tense they appear in. Then there are those verbs whose root is modified slightly in the present tense form. And that's what we see with ginosko and ginomai, uh, the, two, the first two that we've looked at here. Uh, el, elusa is, follows that first pattern where it never changes. And so this is a, an example of a first aorist that we've already studied where it should be kind of used to seeing them and parsing them. It starts with the augment and then it, the, uh, the, the stem of the verb appears, lu, and then the tense formative plus the ending if there is an ending. Egnon and agenomain form directly from their roots while their forms in the present tense have been modified slightly. And so we need to think about what we, were, what we learned in chapter 20 with the, the three patterns. The third pattern that I didn't already mention is the fact that some of the verbs in a different tense will form from a completely different root. And uh, an example of this would be horao. Horao means I see. But if you a Greek wanted to say I will see, they had to use what looks like a completely different verb, apsomai. That means I will see. It forms from a completely different root. And that's an example where that verb too is uh, deponent in the future form. And so there's that, that, that third pattern has quite a few changes. But we're mainly um, studying in this chapter those, those of the second pattern where the root is uh, modified slightly in the present tense. And that, this, this phenomenon affects how the aorist of these kinds of verbs form. So these second aorists, the, their aspect hasn't changed at all. When we studied first aorist, we said, okay, well, an aorist is, relates indefinite action that normally takes place in the past. And in English, we generally provide the suffix ed to the form of the verb to uh, denote the correct aspect. Well, second aorists, even though they form a little differently, their aspect 
is not different. It's the same. It's indefinite action that normally takes place in the past. So let's analyze these two verbs again, ginosko and ginomai, according to their translations and um, looking at how, how they appear in all their forms. The first singular would be egnon. So we've got the augment plus the root plus the secondary ending, and this would be I knew. Egnos, you knew. Egnon, he knew. And there will be a movable new, depending on um, whether the next word in the sentence would begin with a consonant or a vowel, determines whether or not the new will appear. Egnomen would mean we knew. Egnote, you knew. And egnosan, they knew. And so we see a recurring theme here, and that is that this forms directly from the root of the word ginosko, which is gno. It has the augment, and it's going to take the secondary endings, and would translate it as past undefined action. Ginomai, in the first singular, would be agenomain. This would be translated, I was. Agenu, you were. And ageneta, he was. These endings look a little different because these are the middle passive endings, and that's because uh, ginomai is deponent in the past tenses as well. Agenometha would be we were. Agenestha would be you were. And agenomta would be they were. So these are the translations and the forms of these two verbs which illustrate what we're talking about, and these uh, kinds of changes also happen to other secondaris verbs. So in concerning their formation, they're similar to the imperfect tense, which we've already studied. They're going to have the augment, and they'll have the secondary endings, but they will not have the sigma alpha. Uh, the imperfect doesn't take the sigma alpha, obviously, and neither will these second aorists. So the question becomes, well, then how do we distinguish between the imperfect and the second aorist if they have these similarities? And the answer is that the second aorist will form directly from the root, while the imperfect always forms from the present tense stem. So let's, this, is a, this is significant here. Let me say it one more time. You can read it one more time. The second aorist will always form directly from the root, while the imperfect always forms from the present tense stem. Let's take a look at how this works. We have these three verbs that we've already analyzed. Uh, luo, which is in that first pattern where the, uh, the root never changes no matter what tense it's in. And then we have these two that follow a second pattern where the root is modified slightly in the present tense. Uh, so the imperfect of luo would be eluon. And so it looks just like the present tense. It forms from the present tense and the root doesn't change at all, it's uh, eluan, and the aorist would be elusa, uh, being a first aorist, it would have that sigma alpha tense formative. So this follows um, what, I'm, what I'm calling the first pattern. But then ginosko, uh, in the imperfect in aorist, there's a pretty big difference. Eginoskon. All right, well, where's the root in that form? I suppose it's kind of there, but it's been modified slightly because this forms directly from the present tense. And that's always true with the imperfect. The imperfect always forms from the present tense stem. And that's how we're going to distinguish a form like eginoskon from the aorist form egnon. Because the aorist form here, you can see it's a second aorist, forms directly from the root. And so we're just illustrating that definition that we just gave. Um, ginomai, in the imperfect as is eginomain. And you can see the gin there that forms uh, directly from the present tense stem. Looks a little different from the root. But the aorist, oh, how, and it's a very slight change. The difference is one vowel. Instead of again omain, the aorist is again omain. And again, it's again omain because the gen comes directly from the root. So how can we distinguish between the imperfect and the second aorist? Well, the imperfect will always form from the present tense stem, whereas the aorist will always form from the root of the word. The stem of the second aorist forms directly from the root. Besides learning the lexical form of these words, then we need to also pay attention to the roots. So when we're studying the vocab words, we obviously want to learn the lexical form. That's how we learn the, the words. But we also want to look over to the right in parentheses because the author puts the uh, root in it by an asterisk. And we want to be familiar with those roots, especially if they follow this second pattern where the root is modified slightly in the present tense. And the other pattern would be if the root changes completely, but there's not a lot of those kinds of verbs. 
but we want to pay close attention to the root. Let's take a quick glance at the passive before we end uh, this discussion of the second aorist, and we're going to talk more about the passive forms in a later chapter, in a later video. If we look at a verse like this, uh, it starts off by saying, Evangelisas thai mede ten basileon tu theu, hoti epi tuta apestalen. Um, so uh, we haven't learned what kind of verbal form is that first word. It comes from evangelizo, which means I preach. Uh, but now it's a uh, aorist passive infinitive, and we translate this phrase as, it is necessary for me to preach the kingdom of God. And then hoti because, epi tuta for this, or for this reason, apestalen. Apestalen is an aorist, a second aorist passive verb. And for now, we're just going to note this. It's translated, I was sent, and uh, it forms directly from the root apostel, it only has one lambda, so we know it's not the imperfect. It doesn't have the sigma alpha either, so it's, it's not a first error, it's a second aorist. Translated, I was sent. And um, something that's really simple that we can take away right now and we'll look at in more detail later is, when we studied the first aorist, we learned that the tense formative was theta eta for the passives. I don't know if you'll remember that, sigma alpha for the active and middle and theta eta for the passive. Well, instead of theta eta for the second aorists, the theta drops out, and it's just going to be an eta. So it forms directly from the root, and the tense formative is eta. It'll keep the augment, and this verb apestalen, the augment comes after the preposition part of the word, so it's ape instead of apa. Apestalen, and it takes the, uh, the secondary ending. And so we'll just take a quick glance at the passive now, but what we want to remember is that the second air is formed directly from the root, so as we're studying them, let's remember to uh, keep an eye on the root when we're studying our vocabulary.